Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Greetings and salutations, sir. It is good to be here, to be alive, and to be doing the thing with the microphones and the videos and the words. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I, of course, am your host, Charlie, and I'm joined once again by the political comrade himself, Zilios. It's good to see you on this beautiful, somewhat rainy, somewhat thundery, somewhat who knows what's going to happen in the next half hour weather of the South. Yes. Uh, welcome to the South. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is the Thursday Night Hangout. This is a weekly live show where we try our best to cover the topics that are most important to you with you during our show. If you haven't yet submitted your topic, question, etc., have no fear. You can drop them in the chat. We will add it to the topic list for the show. If but we... what if nothing is important to me, sir? Do what? What if nothing is important to me? Then just lend your voice to a topic that you may not have thought about that gets mentioned on the show. Uh, if we unfortunately do run out of time, uh, the topics that are left over will be added to the very next uh, week's show. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into it. And the first thing is um, some news from uh, Warner Brothers Studios. Uh, they have made the decision to not release a movie that's literally complete. Uh, and that, of course, is Batgirl. Um, now, not only... I, I, now I'm going to be totally honest with you. I didn't even have Batgirl on my radar. So, But it still sucks that you know you put it all that time. You know, the, the crew, uh, the actors, the writers, the director, producers, all that. And it's basically... 5% from the finish line and they're like, you know what? We're not going to release it. At well, all. Like varying reports on why. It's like a mix between like either it was so terrible that they yep. don't really want to release it because yep. it's that terrible versus yep. like maybe it's Hollywood accounting and uh, they don't want to actually show the movie because it's not going to make enough money and they can basically just write it off as a tax expense. Yup, but that's the the main consensus from or, or the rumor mill has basically stated that the movie is so bad that when they did the um uh, the screenings, the test screenings, that there was not a nice thing to say. Nice. Um, now I mean, not nice, but yeah, I mean it's there's something about like even like the Batgirl TV show. Yeah, I'm not sure of that. Like it just wasn't that good. Well, the problem with the Batgirl TV show is they lost their lead actor, what, after the first, or actress, actress after the first um, Ruby Rose season. And then it just didn't recover with the new Batgirl, from my understanding. I could, you know. There, there's just something about Batgirl just being something successful just doesn't seem to work. I don't know. Well, I, I, the, the wonderful world that we live in some people could just point to the simple fact that it was a female superhero lead and that um, that in our current society equals failure, which is stupid. It sucks. But unfortunately, if you've looked around, especially in the United States, you, uh, we there are too many people who don't give female superheroes a chance. Are you saying that you're a failure? No, I'm saying that we as we as the people of the United States are a fucking failure. Oh, I should feel sad now. Well. I don't want to be a failure. I want to be a winner, man. Then do something about it. Booyah. Now, like uh, like I said, uh, Batgirl was not really in my wheelhouse to begin with. First of all, DC superhero movies, there is maybe one or two. No, okay, so the... Um, uh, the Dark Knight Saga, those three. Yes. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, and then I have to say that Shazam was really good. But outside of that... Uh, I still have not seen Shazam. It's good. It's it's corny, it's silly, but but it works. Also, it's like got Zachary Levi in it, so I, I, I've got to, I, had to, I had to see it. And I feel like in the Batman movies, including the new Batman... Mm -hmm. Like the idea of Batgirl works well when she's like a, a part of the story with Batman. Mm -hmm. It's like when she tries being just the lead role, 
It's like the director and story writer forget how to actually write a story at that point. Well, they forget what, what um, you know, that female superheroes are not the same as male superheroes. Actually, you know what? The first Wonder Woman was also very good as well. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Um, and so it's, yeah, like I actually liked the last Batman with um, Mr. Uh, Vampire himself. Oh, Mr. Sparkles? I won't. Yeah, it, I, I'm sorry. I I am very biased, and I will I tell you, you I I will not. I I have no interest in seeing that movie. I I, I don't want to see Sparkles I, in I anything think you'll be because I don't think Sparkles is a, a. The funny thing is that, and this is me basing things off of just the trailer. I was like, okay, now Bruce Wayne becomes Batman in high school. That's what it felt like. It's like, oh, it's a high school drama with Sparkle, and it gets really dark with the the their their version of the Riddler, and most people are like, they don't feel safe with that uh, version of the Riddler. But whatever. I didn't feel high schooly about it at all, to be honest. It just looked like it just looked like a, a once again. I'm basing this solely off of the trailers. It looked like a bunch of pompous asshole private school, uh, boarding school type feel. And it just, I don't know. And Sparkles just doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Yep. But, okay, so back to uh, the, the Batgirl be- thing being canned. There, there's two things um, uh, that that's interesting about this. One, of course, is that being, it's, like I said, it's basically 95% done and it's not going to release. The other thing is they signed a deal with HBO Max Mm -hmm. to have this, I I don't know if it was simultaneously going to be released in theaters and HBO Max, but that's that's got to be a pretty penny as well, that type of contract. And and, And signing that contract, I wonder like if HBO gets to get any of their money back? I don't know. Those are good questions, sir. Now, the other bit of news that came out uh, from WB, Warner Brothers, at the same time, and this is the one that actually affects me, is the fact that they not only did they they uh, can Batgirl, but they're also canning Scoob Holiday Haunt, which is the, um, the sequel to the movie Scoob. And they were apparently able to get most of the voice, ca- yeah, the voice cast back. Um, and I'm, I'm like really sad because I got excited when I heard that there's going to be a, a, an additional Scoob because this is, Scoob is one of the movies that we actually, um, uh, have just the, you know, we bought the, the Amazon, uh, streaming ownership rights to it so that we could watch as many times as we want to. Um, now that being said, there is an online petition that is circling, uh, that is being supported by, at bare minimum, the co-writer of the sequel uh, to try to see if maybe if you get enough support, this shit could maybe get back on track. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the co-writer, uh, Paul Denny, who's best known for working on Batman the Animated Series, uh, said, yes, I'm a co- I'm co-writer, but also why cancel a 95% finished holiday film? Oh, it's also almost finished as well. Uh, 95% finished holiday movie this close to fall when you're guaranteed kids watching it from right after Halloween until at least New Year's makes no business sense, especially as both kids and parents. Doug, apparently, it did very well in the work in progress screening. So, those are all good questions, sir. And it makes me mad because I um if if you if anyone's curious the the premise of this next movie was going to be um, Scooby Doo's first Christmas through the Mystery Machine Gang's investigation of an apparently haunted holiday resort, oh. uh, and it was geared for streaming release during the twenty twenty two holiday season. So they. From my understanding, it looked like it was just going to be a digital streaming release. It wasn't going to go into theaters. You wouldn't have to worry about that type of physical promotions and whatnot. So that makes me sad. Don't be sad, man. I'm really sad, damn it. All these things to look forward to. Now you have nothing. You can't even watch Batgirl. Once again, I, 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 nothing, not that there's anything wrong with Batgirl, but 
it was never on my radar to begin with. I'm just saddened that I won't be able to see the sequel to Scoob. For now. I did sign the petition already, by the way. Just in case. Well, I never saw the first one, so I don't even know about it. It's good. It's good. It's good. And it had like a lot of like the like it, it had a bunch of cameos. It had Captain Caveman in there. It had um Dick Dastardly and his um and his sidekick Muttley. It was good. Sounds like things I would have had to watch previous shows to understand, which I don't know any of them. E- you do, but it's probably buried deep, deep, deep in your childhood. Captain Caveman was like all of those names I just mentioned were like mid to early eighties cartoon characters. I had a childhood. I thought I was just born at like 15. Um, I just appeared one day <laughs> like a fiery Phoenix. Sure. Everything you thought you knew about me is just like, it was embedded into your brain. Ah, I see. So, so there's big brother is, is brainwashing me into believing that I've known you for quite a while. Exactly. And I am the effect of big brother. Basically. I do want to point out, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, this is, I, of course, did this in person, but we're going to do this uh, on the show. So it's immortalized and it is a belated happy 40th birthday to Zelius. Join the club, son of a bitch. <laughs> Yay. I'm officially under the hill. Woo. Yes, you're under the hill. Yes. Um, okay. So let's jump. Let's go from uh, talking about. Uh, two projects being canned to one project that somehow is making money that is so badly a poor ass ripoff of a major uh, series. And that, of course, is there is a game that is currently available on the Xbox uh, App Store that is called War Gods Zeus um, of Child. War Gods Zeus of Child. However, That's if, a mouthful. it yes, it is. Uh, it is currently, or was at the time that I pulled this story, uh, it was priced at $4.09. Um, if you actually jumped, if you actually paid the $4.09 and started to play the game, it didn't actually say War God Zeus of Child uh, on the title screen. It actually said God of Warning. God of warning. Yep. Uh, the 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 tagline, or I guess the blurb about it is War God Zeus of Child is a great war game. Destroy all enemies and creatures with the Zeus War Gods of Challenge. Kill them all with your gun. Launch attacks with various combos. Reach the highest monster kills without dying. Feel the power of the warning god. If you actually saw this, someone did like a, like a very poor man version ripoff of uh, Kratos from God of War. And it's basically Kratos in, in an arena where he basically just flails away and you just kill monsters oh, at, at wave after wave after wave. And it does seem that the monster... Um, Art assets were ripped from a Resident Evil game, <laughs> and so when when Microsoft was pushed about this, uh, Microsoft uh, first of all it was it was made in Unity. It was released July twenty six, and it's part of the Xbox Creators Program. The idea is to let smaller teams and solo developers use their consoles as dev equipment, development equipment, uh, make it easier for people to make games and sell them across Xbox and PC. So what you're trying to tell me is that Microsoft has no gatekeepers and you can, and the one thing that Apple has so much freaking problems with, and that of course is, you know, uh, the attack of the clones or the, you know, stealing art assets and trying to make a quick buck before it gets removed is alive and well on Microsoft. Well, I have some bad news for you. Yeah. What's up? This morning, it was pulled from the Xbox store. <laughs> so, so, but you missed your opportunity to go play. All right. So, it is now August the 4th. It is August the 4th. And it was released on July 26th. 
So technically, it had a nine day life. So, so the real question is: Is this a how much money? Effect where, like, if this basically never made the news, because it was all the, it all made the news within like the last two days. It was yep. like what article did it else, and everybody else picked up on it. If that never happened, I wonder if like it basically just would have flown under the radar and never got the ban hammer. It's only once it came to light that like, holy shit, this game exists. And guess what? People probably went and purchased the game because they wanted to see what it was like. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's so, there's so many YouTube videos yeah. of this god awful ripoff. Um, so I, mean, I think the developer made a quick couple thousand bucks by basically making a crappy ass game. Oh yeah. And why not? Sounds like a winning combination. I mean, for that's that that's okay. So I I'm looking at. Let me see if, hold on, let me do this. Let me tighten my search so I can actually get just the videos of this and not other videos that are close to the same name. Um, yeah, so there are, on the, with a quick search, there are 11,000 results for videos surrounding War Gods Zeus of Child. So let's just say, so technically, okay, 11,000 and a price tag of $4.09. So technically, this developer got away with 44 grand. And that's just based off of what we know about from those videos. Who yeah. knows what else came out? Exactly. 44 grand for using utilizing someone else's art assets and I'm sure it's a parody. I'm sure the person knew what they were doing. But at the same time, they knew that it was going to be one of those this is so stupid and so bad. I've got to check it out type of situations. Um I mean this this of course this goes right into I mean this is exactly well, this person was not trying to make uh uh, um, oh my gosh, my brain just went dead. The uh, fan fic, uh, fan made stuff. Um, this was just someone trying. That this honestly looks like someone trying to make a quick buck, and also showing the the the, <laughs> the gross amount of negligence on someone. You know, checking on all the entries. Now, of course, it's not physically possible to. Uh, cause I'm sure that there are so many, um, entries and submissions through this, uh, cr uh Xbox creators program. But I mean, when it's that blatant, I mean, it's, it's, oh my God. Pretty blatant. Just, just a little bit blatant, but that's okay. You've, you, you saw a screenshot, didn't you? I mean, oh. it's, it's bad. No, I saw the videos. I mean, yeah. it's pretty obvious when you see the videos. You're yeah. like, oh, yes. Yes. I mean, there's really no doubt. Now, so we have this blatant ripoff, which has now been removed. But let's talk about something else that has Microsoft in the news. There's more news? Yes. So uh, Microsoft and Sony apparently are getting into quite the the verbal fisticuffs. And this, this is around, um, uh, this is basically centered around the continuing saga of Microsoft saying that their acquisition of Activision Blizzard isn't, go isn't that big of an issue. And Sony going, it's a big thing. Microsoft is, um, <laughs> is downplaying uh, uh, their, let's see here. They're basically, they're trying to make the games that, okay, here we go. Microsoft claims that there is nothing unique about the video games developed and published by Activision. Okay. Further adding, none of the games, including the military shooter franchise Call of Duty, are must-have games for any rival gaming company or distributor. Now, Sony... Um respond responded with the following according to a, two, a 2019 study the importance of call of duty to entertainment in general is indescribable the brand has 
the brand has the only video game IP to break into the top 10 of all entertainment brands among fans, joining powerhouses such as Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings. Call of Duty is so popular that it influences users' choice of console, and its community of loyal users is entrenched enough that even if a competitor had the budget to develop a similar product, it would not be able to rival it. Now, I wish that our our uh, friend Sam Grizzle was in the crowd right now, but he is not because I'm sure that he would say that Battlefield is absolutely a rival that stands up against Call of Duty. So I don't. So that last part was. Uh, I understand. Yes, there there are not a lot of, you know, other successful war games out there uh, on the level of Call of Duty, but Battlefield is one of them. Uh, so to kind of, I mean, truly to downplay Battlefield is kind of a dick move. Battlefield, I think is EA, right? I think so. I never know, to be honest, who makes what anymore. I feel like. But anyways, I do find I mean, Microsoft going, oh, you know, nothing that Activision Blizzard really, you know, makes is, is going to. Like, do they actually believe that when they say it? Like, I mean, I know they have to say it yeah. because they want it to go through, but like, do they actually believe what they're saying? I believe that they believe that the individuals that they're dealing with aren't technologically savvy enough to actually know what a a game that would cause that would be labeled a must have is. So here's what I think we need. In these mm-hmm. cases with technology, we mm-hmm. need to change things up. Like, so let's get a jury, right? But instead of having like your normal random like voter jury and it ends up being all like old people, let's do this where you get like from every decade going up to like 60, I'm gonna do a cutoff at 60. You get three people. So three people between the ages of 10 and 20, three between the ages of 20 and 30, and so on and so forth. So you get like a cut of each of the social groups. So you actually get some youngsters in there who can be like, um, you dumb shit. Yes, this is an important game series. Do, but, but okay, but here's the thing. And this is why this that will never happen is because they have... You, there are certain individuals that would be part of this group, I'm almost 100% sure, who believe that they know everything. And being told that they don't know everything would cause a blow up. And if you want to see something get stuck in an infinite loop, put segments of different generations in the same room to try to explain the importance of something that at least half of the groups don't truly understand. Well, that's what this is going to be a case study in. Let's make it happen. Great. Yeah. The Mar- Microsoft's acquisition to, of Activision Blizzard is going to be the case study. So if they don't understand what a Activision or Blizzard even is in the first place, they should not be on the jury, which I know you probably can't be on the jury if you know what they are, because then you have a preconceived notion of what the answer is, which is a roundabout of blah. My money is on that. Th- those type of that, that group. Uh, 75% would be like, I don't know what Activision Blizzard is, but Microsoft, they they make uh, the word processor, right? I've got Microsoft Office. That's So they're they're doing something other than that now? True. That's what they're covered. That's the conversation. They'll be like, uh, dude. Oh, the Xbox. I bought that for my kids. I have heard of that. Uh, the Xbox is, yes. They the, play Call of Warcraft. The t- the TV box that... that um, where the shoot 'em up stuff and 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 that fun stuff that you know helps raise my children instead of me raising them myself. Yes. Anyways. Ay ay ay. But uh yeah, this should be interesting. I mean, you know th- this whole situation is just funny to me. I it's gonna. It, Microsoft's gonna end up with Activision Blizzard in the end, but oh, yeah. the fun experience of of you know everything, where how we get to that is gonna be. There's so many more stories that are gonna be coming out. Okay, so yeah, I have no doubt that that's what happened in the end. Yeah. Now, 
uh, now since we we are talking about Call of Duty and then um, shooting games and whatnot, let us talk about a, a question, a topic that came in uh, earlier this week, and that was, in your opinion, what is your preferred perspective to play in? I think it depends on the game. I mean, it really does. So, like, most MMOs, because they are, like, action-oriented or spellcast, but, like, not first-person shooter style, typically, that's going to be, like, further out than, like, an over-the-shoulder third person. It's going to be, like, remove, like, you know, scrolled out, zoned out, so I can get, like, a full view of what's going on because normally you have like character like you know enemies you know in front of you and behind you and all that stuff um it's actually a problem so like in final fantasy 4t they can be obnoxious because you have your field of vision and there's stuff going off like off the screen like off the platform but like if it's off to the left and right you actually like can't always see it so you have to like pan your camera back and forth back and forth back and forth to try to see it because you can't actually scroll like zoom out far enough to get that full panoramic view of what's going on. Uh, but then you go to like a first person shooter, like World of Warcraft, not World of Warcraft, good Lord. Um, Overwatch. Yeah. Um, or even a game, um, usually that one first person shooter, but then like Mass Effect is more like the over the shoulder third person shooter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really just kind of depends on the game. And usually it's kind of what does the developer build the game in mind with? So I wouldn't say I necessarily have a preferred way of doing it. Um, I don't think I've ever played a MMO, like a fantasy, like a RPG style MMO, where I've played like first person. Um, like even like, cause I've been playing Guild Wars too lately. Yeah. Like even that, like you have to intentionally enable the option to allow the first, first person view. Cause they yeah. realize people might probably scroll in to get a closer view without actually wanting to go first person. Right. So like in that game, like you can toggle a box to actually enable that. So you don't accidentally do it. So I think that's probably going to be pretty common. Whereas first person shooters, people want to be that first person. Cause you want to get like that aim um but that's how it works so it just kind of depends on the game um yeah what about you i you know i i'm i agree i think it really does depend on the game now if if given the situ the i guess given the option mm -hmm. it's really tough i mean the thing is for me i believe it it will it would come down to a comfort thing what does the if if i'm able to toggle between the two which one allows me to feel more comfortable in in the way that the game is flowing mm. because i'm sure that you know it's not like like every single game that has a first person view and, and a third person view that i'm going to choose that one view over the other i think it really yeah. depends on the the you know the how how the you know it feels now i will say this um i can't tell you how <laughs> How much I hate the fact that there are there are games out there that kind of lock when it, you've got uh, the camera behind you uh, and it's locked at a specific angle and I just if I could just mm. push it down just a little bit so I could see a little bit more in front of me. Yep. Oh my god! I can't tell you how much I'm just I'm like dragging my mouse going. Please just just give me that one centimeter that will allow me to actually see that i'm about to walk into an ambush i understand that they lock yes. it so that you don't see the ambush but damn it I, it just feels like i should be able to just a little bit do you ever like crane your neck like yes like, oh, like you're like your player in the game like just a little bit more come on you can do this no i can't tell you like like i'll be walking up to um to the edge of something and i'll i'll literally like get up from my seat and try to like look down on my computer screen to see if I could see a little bit more. Or I definitely, you know, I, I bend to one side or other to see if I could just change that perspective a little more. Watch out though. When it's the hollow deck, you're going to actually like fall off the cliff and you'll feel like the pain through the suit of falling off that cliff. Oh, yeah. the like, upside and downside of having a out. haptic suit. Yes. Well, you know, you're a true gamer, as you can feel pain in your haptic suit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
That means you got the real haptic suit. You don't got some fake, false bullshit. There's like different versions of the PVP with pain or without pain. Well, there's actually, I don't, I'll have to find it, but there was once upon a time uh, a, a video that I think was on YouTube where it was like, um, it was like a joke Madden where this time it, it has uh, full contact where you're wearing like a haptic suit and you can actually feel getting tackled. Nice. It's like, oh, you broke your leg and your legs actually broke it. I'm it's sorry. Like, did Aaron Donald just suplex you? Yeah. Didn't Gama Kinsu stomp through your helmet? Feel the pain. And you died. <laughs> Game over. Game over. But yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, it depends on the game, and I think that it it really whatever if given the the option, I think it really does come down to uh, which one feels more natural to me. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, let us uh, stop real quick and do friends of the show. Zelius, I am going to spring a new person on you without telling you, so <laughs> hold on to your pantyhose. It's a good thing I forgot my pantyhose in the other room. Yeah, well, well, that's something that I don't need to know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us start off with the one and only the Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For more information, go to IndieCluster.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-C-L-U-S-T-E-R.com. So many indies. Now, for the next one, the guy is at yet another convention, and that, of course, is Boy Media. Founded in 2015 by Andrew Trent, Noodle Boy Media, previously Wet Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top-notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information and to view their full list of services, check out facebook.com slash noodleboymedia. The next one is uh, the uh, an amazing superhero and he, of course, uh, was here today to adjust both myself and my son. And that, of course, is Hero Chiropractic. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore. The company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible, and most importantly, suited to your individual needs. For more information, go to HeroChiropractic.com. Yeah. Now, of course, the next one uh, is the mastermind behind the... Uh, the current intro and outro music for Alter Confusion. Crosspad Creative. Need a new logo or want to work on a full branding and content strategy? Or maybe you need music or audio for your content, just like Alter Confusion. Crosspad Creative offers a whole host of solutions for individuals and small businesses. Just email Josh at crosspadcreative at gmail.com and see what he can do for you. And ladies and gentlemen, the, the new arrival... And this one, Zelius does not have the link to, so I apologize ahead of time, but you're just going to have to wing it, Zelius. Ladies and gentlemen, let us talk about Agile Axiom. By day, Christopher Ax Axelfelm leads both a development team and a system administration team working with satellites at NASA's Goddard campus. But while not in meetings and many times during, he is the Agile Evangelist Agile Ax championing the philosophy of Agile and trying to make the world a better place for software developers, testers, system admins, and software projects the world over. 
decades of experience in software development and leading agile teams has brought to bear against all evil processes, ineffective work, and bad habits. For more information, go to agileaxiom.com. That's A-G-I-L-E-A-X-I-O-M dot com. That, I'm, I'm getting like PTSD right now. You're welcome, Zillies. Mm. By the way, X has been one of the most uh, like dependable backers and supporters of Ultra Confusion for it's years. Nature. He's actually jumped in and helped us uh, at conventions in the past. Uh, so I'm happy to, to get him some love and some attention and some recognition. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, of course, since we gave you the friends of the show, we also need to give you some information about Alter Confusion. And the first thing is, and this, of course, is something that we are super duper 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 excited about. What? And of course, we can't forget the Kanban board for all your post-it notes. What? I'm just making fun of Agile. Okay. Well, he'll come and kill you. I mean, what? Okay. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Ultra Confusion is proud to say that we have been fundraising for Extra Life for 11 straight years. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best, game, to help sick and injured children at their cho chosen Children's Miracle Network Hospital. And the money we raise through Extra Life will go directly to Children's Healthcare Atlanta as unrestricted funds. This means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars we raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you... If you have the capacity to donate, please go to extra-life.org and search for Alter Confusion. And oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if we can raise $80 between now and I believe the end of August, Alter Confusion gets a special um, uh, reward. It's a it's a cool dice. Uh, oh gosh, how do I explain this dang thing without actually showing a picture of it because I'm I'm silly and I forgot to do the dang thing. Um, it is called the uh, Extra Life Dice Rolling Tray. Ooh. So if we raise 80 bucks this month, we can get that. And then of course, um, I, I'm hearing whispers that we might try to do a, a small little um, Extra Life tabletop special this month, but I'm still trying to work out the details. Interesting. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let us also tell you that Alter Confusion survives on the love and support of fans like you, and so we have a Patreon page. Patreon lets you, the fans, lovers, haters, demigods, interdimensional beings, gods, demons, aliens, supporters, and more to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability we need to build an even stronger creative career. Currently, we have two different tiers. There is the $1 tier, which is $1 a month or $12 a year. And what that will get you is the early, it will give you early access to all of our playthroughs, as well as the ability to uh, participate in patron only posts. If you want to, if you're feeling a little frisky at the $5 a month, or $60 a year tier. Not only do you get everything at the $1 tier, but you also gain your name or organization added to the thank you section or friends of the show of every single Thursday night hangout. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go to patreon.com slash ultra confusion. Patreon is spelled P A T R E O N dot com. That does sound pretty sweet, sir. It does. And uh, for those who are patrons, or maybe actually for those who are thinking about becoming patrons, uh, there is a brand new playthrough that just got early access to all the patron current patrons. And that game, of course, is called Transient, which is actually uh, created by the same company uh, behind the game Quinarium which uh, we also have a full playthrough of. So we've got the playthrough of both of those, but Canarium is for is public playthrough and patron only currently is the transient version. And it is wild. That game is wild. Not gonna nice. lie. It's quite weird. Quite interesting. It's kind of like 
it's kind of cyberpunk, kind of like Blade Runner esque with uh, mixed with like Cthulhu. Interesting, sir. So definitely something to check out. Um, okay, now let us talk about some other stories that have occurred this week. And wait, there's more. Yes. The first bit of news, and this is something that I think, unfortunately, has the, the potential of happening more than we know, and that is that a um, an esports owner is being sought uh he is being sought by the uh oh crap what uh the Filipino authorities he is allegedly part of a 33 million dollar drug bust in Manila hmm. uh his esports team is called Bren Esports Bren is is his nickname so it's named after him um the the interesting and this is what really sucks for the, all, all those people who are part of Bryn Esports, the organization has uh, has teams in everything from Overwatch to League of Legends to Counter Strike. It was founded in 2017. They've won 34 tournaments across their various games and have a large following on social media. So it isn't just you know some eighty b little. Uh, esports team that just popped up this thing has been established and has um you know a history of winning um and apparently this is this is one of the main esports teams in that region so um the 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 arrest warrant was issued for this gentleman uh and he was uh, officially charged with illegal drug offense. Um, and the, the, um, the Filipino authorities have stated they can spare everyone the trouble if he surrenders and faces the charges against him. So I guess the question is now what happens to all the esports teams? Like, is it a corporation that can then take it over? Or like if he's no longer the head maestro, do they basically disband right but and, and that i mean and that once again this is something that will affect that entire region now uh the gentleman uh bren chong has taken to twitter and said hello twitter as many of you as some of you may be aware throughout the last few hours there have been several news articles written about my alleged involvement in a case in my home country the philippines i'm writing this Twitter thread to categorically deny these claims that may destroy the good name I have taken I have taken care of for so many years. Some of you may only know me as part of the esports community, but in reality, I'm a much broader person than just that. I'm an angel investor and an entrepreneur. I invest in companies, startups that I believe have great potential or start my own. I invest in people who have great ideas and more so to individuals whom I see goodness and great talent. So this guy, if proven guilty and arrested, that is that affects a shit ton more than just esports. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um you know I hopefully the the individuals who have already who were angel invested by this guy or are part of his esports organization? There is some sort of safety net to catch them. Otherwise, wow. Yeah. Yep. I got nothing on this. Like, hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't either. I'm just, that's, that's saddens me that potentially when you do something bad, it it can rip it has it could potentially have a very crazy ripple effect and could affect so many more people and unfortunately there's not i mean hopefully if it does affect all these people you have good-hearted individuals who are willing to step up and and uh soften the blow or save some of these organizations companies uh esports teams whatever but chances are to, this could you know destroy 
a shit ton of lives. Yeah. I mean, in a way, esports is still kind of the wild, wild west. Yep. It's kind of you do whatever you want. You need a government. Well, the problem is there, there's potential. I mean, there's kind of like governing bodies, but they're for, for specific games. And so, you know, when you have an esports organization that's trying to make money, so they've got, you know, they've got uh, a Counter Strike team and a Call of Duty team and an Overwatch team and a League of Legends team and, uh, insert other team here not all of these esports leagues are are policed to uh, you know at all for how much money can someone make um you know i don't i don't think there's any esports leagues out there that have a salary cap but fuck i don't know though i think that anything the closest would probably be the overwatch pro league but how much longer is that going to be able to survive with the stagnation that continues to be overwatch well, you have Overwatch 2. That's coming out pretty soon. Is I, it, though? Yeah. No, like, they just finished the public betas. Yes, but is it actually coming out? Or is or, or are they just saying that it's coming out so it looks good on that merger sheet? Oh, no. It's definitely coming out. Apparently, supposedly, October 4, 2022. Well, I'll, I'm, it's not like I'm going to run out and buy it. So I'll, I'll just well, wait and see. It's a good thing you don't have to buy it because it's free to play, sir. Oh, so it's going to be different than the original Overwatch. Oh, yeah. No, it's not pay to play. It's uh, free to play, which means they're going to they're gonna nickel and dime the shit out of you until you can't see straight. Yeah, no, they were, there was a uh, post going around about basically they were sending out surveys mm -hmm. of what were you willing to pay for things like the uh, sprays and the skins and all the other fun stuff. I bet you actually continue to develop a roster and add maps and then we could talk about how much i'd be willing whoa, for whoa, 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 whoa. How are we sprays money, and sir? skins how are we going to make that money for next quarter's tp report sir give me a tps report there you go you're welcome i forgot the shit part yeah uh, uh yeah i whatever you know what they have, they have I, new map modes and they have new characters coming out for overwatch 2 yes Yes, for the initial release. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. No, I have no interest in playing Overwatch Two. Uh, I'm actually my whole reason of being interested in Overwatch Two mm -hmm. was literally PVE. Just because of the PVE part. Mm -hmm. that has that it. been completely scrapped at this point? No, it has not been scrapped, but it's to be determined on the release. <laughs> so. So it's a nice way of saying we've probably scrapped it, but we want you to still be interested. So we're going to say it's in the works. Uh, that's, uh, mm. Starcraft Ghost, baby. I guess there is some truth to that. It, it would be the first time that that company did it. it. Well, so just really quickly looking, mm -hmm. what they're saying now is PVE will have released as a seasonal content in 2023 you're gonna have to pay for it but that'll be interesting though because in a way overwatch already had seasonal pve modes mm -hmm. so like during like halloween and christmas and other seasons mm -hmm. there was already a pretty straightforward but it was still pve modes mm -hmm. during those times so they're gonna pull a little doozy and just like basically release those same yep Pretty simple PVE modes. Yep, and say and that like, look oh. at all we did. Yep, I, yep. Because like when Jeff Kaplan was still doing his thing, we all thought it was going to be basically Overwatch Two was really for PVE. Yep. Overwatch One would still PVP, and then Overwatch Two is basically get this really just for the PVE add-on with like a full-fledged campaign, for lack of better terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And now who the hell? Because the thing is, because there's a lot of content they could add in PVE, because you have all the characters. There's actually a storyline, believe it or not. Um, what? There's like Oh, comics. that's that's gonna get scrapped. Storyline. There who already are that? comics associated with them, kind of. Ah, uh, scrap that too. Save some money. So yeah, I'll be curious to see if they actually do like any more than like simple game modes, basically, mm -hmm. um, for the PVE. 
Well, I guess. It's the seasonal part that worries me. Yeah. But it's just being a rehash of what they've already done. Right. Well, we'll see. All right. So um, I do want to um, uh, I do want to mention this real quick. Uh, Mario Kart 8 is finally getting their next set of new tracks. Uh, if you were one of those individuals who have Mario Kart 8 on the Switch and you did purchase the Booster Course Pass, or sorry, yeah, the Booster Course Pass, um, there are now eight new courses that you can add to your um, circuit. Uh, those Now, the, the thing about um, Mario Kart 8 uh, and the, the courses that have been released have been... Uh, almost all of them are exclusively remakes of courses from previous generations of Mario Kart. So, for example, uh, the brand new Turnip Cut has the uh, Tour New York Minute, uh, which is the Mario Kart Tour track. Uh, the SNES Mario, Cir Mario Circuit 3 from Super Mario Kart. The Nintendo 64 Calamari Desert from, of course, Mario Kart 64 and the DS Waluigi Pinball, which is a fan, uh, is basically fan favorites, uh, which of course is Mario Kart DS. Then the second cup that they're releasing is the Propeller Cup, which has the Tour Sydney Sprint, which Mario Kart Tour, the GBA Snowland, which is Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance, uh, the Wii Mushroom Gorge for Mario Kart Wii, and here comes. A special surprise, and that is there is a course called Sky High Sunday, which is a brand new, never been released before course as well. So those are your eight. But here's an added bonus for those people who did, uh, who are already into the the booster course pass. You may have noticed that there is a certain course uh, called uh, Coconut Mall, and. There is something very odd about this version of Coconut Mall versus the Wii version. That is that in the Wii version, as you're nearing the finish line, you have these, like, I want to say um, oversized cars being drive driven by shy guys erratically as they basically just drive back and forth and make your life hell as you're trying to get through. Up to... Before this release, the Switch version, the cars were there, the shy guys were in the cars, but the cars were stationary. Now, with this release, uh, there was a patch that was made to this course. Not only are the shy guys driving back and forth sporadically, but they'll also, on occasion, decide to do donuts to make it even more complicated for you to get through there. So that, that will, uh, I guess, make everyone happy and then really pissed. When you get sideswiped by a shy guy and you're trying to run a, win a race, but that's one of the the beautiful things about Mario Kart is you it's not just a straight race. You got to watch every angle if you're gonna win. I just remember like the old school SNES days where all you had to worry about was basically like what was in front of you and where's the human player who is trying to hit you with that red shell. Yep, that was. Those were the simpler days, sir. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. Okay, now, um, I know we're running out of time, but I, I have to tell this story. I have to read the story. Uh, um, so I'm just trying I'm trying to remember how the hell to, to zoom on my Chromebook because my brain just no work. Control reads. plus. Huh? Control plus. Control plus. Thank you. Because, unfortunately, this picture is of an email that is really, really small. Okay, um, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, as many of you probably know, there is a humongous convention that's happening right now uh, that happens every single year, and it's specialized and centralized around pencil and paper uh, board games and all that stuff. That, of course, is Gen Con. Gen Con uh, started today and runs through uh, Sunday. Unfortunately, it seems like the Asshat Brigade has found a way to go after many of the attendees. Uh, this is this is a little um, is a little snippet of an email that an individual received from what looked like an actual Gen Con uh, staff or admin account. Hey, this is blank. Uh, they they 
redacted the names because they were u- utilizing real names of individuals on the board of directors for Gen Con. Uh, this is blank. You probably already know me as blank on Twitch or Twitter. I'll cut right to the chase. My wife and I have an open marriage and I'm going to be at Gen Con this year. I'd love to meet up with you. I don't know if you're attracted to masculine chiseled men, but I'd make it worth your while. I have plenty of money and I'll pay for your tits to be cut off. Wait, what? Yeah. That took a left turn. So basically what's happened is for some reason, uh, many of the attendees are receiving these harassing emails. Uh, and then there are also individuals who are um, receiving phone calls and text messages as well that are basically in the same vein as this. Um, thankfully, um, uh, so, but the, the first, the original rumor was that uh, it was an inside job that there was someone on the Gen Con board of directors or staff that that was t- specifically targeting specific individuals. Uh, but it looks like, um, let's see, the selected targeting of marginalized attendees led some to speculate that someone inside Gen Con had played a part. But Gen Con later denied this, saying that none of the attendees affected had provided their phone numbers to the organizers. Instead, it simply seems that folks uh, who it would be assumed would be attending this convention were being targeted. So basically, there's there was there are people out there who are just kind of uh, keeping an eye on Gen, hashtag Gen Con, and then if they're basically getting as much information as they can on those people, um, and then going to town on them. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are currently at Gen Con or you're going to be at Gen Con and you receive anything, make sure, if it's especially if it's email, uh, make sure it's from at GenCon.com, G-E-N-C-O-N.com, not at www.GenCon.com, not at Gen-Con.com, and not at GenCon.org. Those are three of the... um, the URLs that are that are being massively used. Well, here's the crappy part. Like if you're on an iPhone yep. or any mobile device, yep. that's trivial to spoof because like typically you can see that in the headers on emails. Like if yep. you're on like a actual computer, but like you really have to dive in on like a mobile device to see those headers to see because it's I can see an email right now saying I'm Zealus from GenCon.com. Yep. And that's what will appear as from a default header perspective on a mobile device. Yep. Yep. You really have to click in to be like, oh, it's actually from Silly. It's at gmail.com. What he's saying is blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's why are people such asshats? That's I, I don't know. Like, uh, it's just, oh. Gen Con goes further on to say, we're aware that there are harassers attempting to impersonate Gen Con attendees and staff via text and email. We encourage you not to engage with them and instead report any concerns to policy team at gencon.com or the safety consultant. This is um, uh, if you're if you want to take to Twitter uh, at MX underscore danger. Um, MX underscore danger is the one who shared the uh, the little blurb of from the email. Uh, but I mean, come on, seriously, the, why, what, how does, why would you, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. If this is what rocks your socks off, go do it to your, to your friends or something. Uh, Zelius is gone. Um, uh, go do it to yourself at a different convention. There's Zelius. Um, and I was doing so well. Uh, if if this is how you get your socks off, then just join join your own little meathead circle jerk and do it to each other. Leave leave people who who these innocent people who just want to enjoy the convention alone. I mean it. it it's it's another. I mean it's 
it's another form of harassment. It's the the one thing that we constantly, unfortunately, we have to constantly say this, is cosplay does not equal consent. Convention going does not equal you can harass the shit out of them. Amen to that, brother. I mean, it makes it makes me sick to to read this kind of crap. But I, I saw that. I, I mean, it's it. This shit is happening right now, and so I I had I, I, I would be really pissed if I didn't say anything tonight about it. So, but it's absolute crap, absolute crap. We should be be We should know better and be better. Crap is a nice way of putting it, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap up this show, shall we? Must we? Uh, I believe your master will probably start counting down the seconds on the clock in a second, so we probably should. She is staring at me very intently right now. It's That's kind of crazy. what I figured. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to the Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. For myself, Charlie, and Zelius, it's been a pleasure giving everything to come our heads, our mouths, and of course, our hearts. We'll be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother.